Pokemon X and Y, games beloved by many, and quite possibly hated by even more. Which is absolutely crazy to think, because this game sold 16 million copies. That's a... that's... that's a lot. But how could a game so well received on launch slowly become infamous among Pokemon fans for being one of the poopiest ones? Is it just nostalgia goggles for the 2D games, or is Pokemon X and Y really that bad? Well, only one way to find out. Replaying Pokemon X with only shiny Pokemon. Well, what? A man can't have some fun while he investigates the Twitter hate mob with children's game? Hmm? Of course, by that I mean, you know, grind uh, hundreds of hours for slight color differences. I know what you're thinking. I got problems. Yeah? But that's not the point of this video. So leave my imperfections out of this, Dad. Meet Professor Markiplier, who just can't wait to welcome us into the Pokemon world. And also, show off his strange, uh, Pokey Picasso paintings of, uh, I'm assuming monsters? Frolicking in the fields? Here we are given the option to pick between playing as a boy or a girl. And once you've made your choice, you can pick your exact appearance. And by that I mean, uh, you know, among these, uh, two skin types. And whether you're blonde. Pff, come on, cut them some slack. This was the first Pokemon game to offer you any character customization at all. Well, you know, Japan aren't really the leading edge on diversity, are they? Maybe they thought, that's all of them. Whoa, 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 whoa. See, this is where things get a little strange for me. I get the professor, you know, serves as some sort of guide to immerse us into the grand world of Pokemon. But honestly, it comes off a little too godlike for me. You know, even got the pearly gates. I mean, is, is Pokemon, is Pokemon heaven? I hope they fix all of the glitches before I make it up there. From here, the opening part of the game is very reminiscent to the past and present games in the series. It doesn't diverge, you know, too crazy, other than mixing in some true cutscenes here and there, which immediately kind of serve as a reminder that graphics ain't too good once they switch back. But that's only on today's standards, because playing it at the time, I was like, you're telling me you got all of this to fit on this tiny little handheld version of the thing that looks almost exactly like I'm playing it off channel 25 on the TVs? That's, that's it, I'm, I'm Ash. Yep, that's it, I'm Ash now. After we meet our new neighbors and get dressed, not, not exactly in that order, we meet all of the neighborhood kids who are very adamant on giving us a nickname. Yeah, um, don't those usually just come, you know, naturally over time? I mean, what do I look like, a Pokemon, you guys? Okay, fine, uh, what are my options here? Lil, Lil R? <laughs> what? Lil R, huh, okay, uh, can't get much stranger than that. Moving on, uh, R Meister? Big R, now we're talking. <laughs> or wait, I can pick my own? I know that's definitely not how nicknames work. What do you think I'm doing here? Making my artist name, hmm? Not that I'm above seizing the opportunity, of course. I will now only go by our dog, yo! You know, you know, I did think it was very crucial to match the same nickname energy this game was uh, putting down here. Now it's time to choose our starter, and I chose this squirrel bear. You know, the one with the, with the plant hat. What could I say? I'm a grass starter guy. Except that one. Yeah, f*** out of here with that one. So normally, if I was one of the truly insane shiny hunters, here I would reset hundreds if not thousands of times to get a shiny chestpin before progressing any further in these games. And yes, I have been guilty to do this in the past in some of my other shiny only playthroughs, but for now, I I'm just gonna hold on to chestpin here and go for a much more conventional shiny. Much, much, you know, later on. So for now, we'll just have to, you know, be one of our, uh, four rivals. You think I joke? Me? No, no, no. All those kids from earlier? All are rivals in some sort of capacity. Shoni here is like the easy mode rival, as you can tell by her picking the starter weak to us. Later we'll get into Serena, who's the real rival. And uh, Tirano and... Uh, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I played this game a lot. I have no idea what this one's name is. Oh, oh Trevor. Yeah, my favorite Pokemon rival, Trevor. The last two uh, rivals, I wouldn't uh, worry too much about. All they want to do is uh, Fortnite dances and uh, compare text sizes. Yeah, I know. Pretty cool dudes, if I don't say so myself. Much more interesting in this game, our mom's a NASCAR driver. And by NASCAR, I mean a Rhyhorn racer. What? Or are you telling me there's actual backstory on our pokey parents? That That's the first, right? That would explain why our family dog looks so strange. After learning how to capture Pokemon, I guess we should, um, 
should probably do that, huh? Now, if only they could teach me how to read. Words are uh, but a blur to me. You see, the one thing they didn't tell you in the tutorial is that if you want a shiny one, it would take, you know, quite a few hours. Or more accurately, eight. But that's okay, because we got Spicy McNugget. You're gonna be a star, right? Tell you a star. Hey, you get out of here, scram. Really couldn't have asked for a better starter. Is the gym coming up? Bug type. Oh, but not yet. Not until we've uh, traversed the totally not Viridian Forest. Yeah, I guess I should mention that Pokemon X and Y had a real infatuation with just trying to be the Kanto region. Even force feed you Kanto starters. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Did you enjoy the bike in earlier Pokemon games but thought, hey, that bike was too impractical? Can you believe they actually made you click the select button to pull it out? Wow, get with the times. You know what? I wish there was a slightly slower bike. That just made the whole game feel like an ice level. Well, of course you never thought that. It's ridiculous. Why? Why does this somehow work? And it doesn't even feel awkward. I don't know. In theory, it's, it sounds terrible. I mean, the thing is, you don't even have to use it if you hate it. You could just use the D-pad to avoid um, to avoid using these. I mean, it's a steep price to pay. Not to be a rad dude. But our nine. Why does your character look so different? Oh, the hat? Oh, I'm glad you noticed. It's the hat of a, it's a true Frenchman. Yeah, um, and that's not... French Canadian, by the way. I don't want to. I don't want to upset either sides here. I'd rather accept them all as a whole. To be fair, that's going to be rather hard as they even you know, colonize a lot of countries. You know, they really spread out all over the place. The point is here, in, in Kalos, you can wear anything you want, as as long as it's just out of this uh, you know, very small variety. I mean, that's it. But it was the first. I took Spicy McNugget to the local gym to battle bugs inside Charlotte's Web. Oh, that photo museum upstairs. Yeah, don't worry, it's all a front for this dark web shit that we're in right now. Unsurprisingly, Spicy Mac Nugget is enough to get us a gym badge all alone, also while abiding by hardcore Nuzlocke rules. <laughs> you know, not that anyone cares. Wait, do you care? Yeah, I didn't think so. I, I didn't care either, right? Pfft, no, I didn't care. I'd love to tell you about the cool new features and shiny Pokemon we caught in our hunts, but well, we didn't. We didn't happen to do that until we ended up in Paris! You know, it's, I mean, it's currently experiencing a citywide power outage, and hands down the most confusing city layouts in all of gaming. So, uh, if you need a haircut, good luck. You're gonna need it. Could be this street, could be that one. I don't know, dude. You're just gonna have to get a taxi. Wait, did I say no new features? Oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. This game, you can meet the most obvious final boss bad guy at the coffee shop. Share a, share a little coffee, you know, every child's favorite favorite soda pop. What's his interest? In, uh, young Pokemon trainers. Uh, I think he's here for more than just the coffee, guys. Professor Markiplier is here, though, and wants to test how far we've came. This is where abiding by Nuzlocke rules, you know, didn't really work out. But somehow you can, uh, you can lose this battle and win it at the same time. Probably, you know, wasn't even a thought at Game Freak that someone could lose this fight. This is where the professor begs you to join the Cantonian religion and refuses to let you leave without a Canto starter. So, of course, I take the, the cute little green guy and return to our journey. Well, I can't use it. Clearly, it's not shiny, but, but it's the only choice. That is the right one. Just wanted to clear that up, okay? I wanted to end the debate. Racism is over. Finally, a new feature. Have you ever had a horde battle before? You know, a good old five-on-one battle scenario? I mean, sure, it's not exclusive to Pokemon. But here, with a little honey, you just say, you know, slap that on the grass right there. Or a sweet scent? Yeah, I'm not sure what the f*** that means. But either way, a horde of angry Pokemon will spawn. And, uh, you know, this is a very useful way to actually shiny hunt. Speaking of which, there is my baby. Call it Gulp Out. Well, because, uh... Yeah. See, training this thing was, was not too fun. And I was, I was quickly questioned if this was even the right decision. Uh, I could have hunted elsewhere. But I chose this, so. Thank God Spicy Mac Nugget evolved. You know, that's a relief. I'm gonna need all the help I can get here. Our nine dog, yo. Do you know any sweet moves to show me in battle? Yeah, actually, now that you mentioned it, I do know this one called Death. I do gotta say, these 3D models, especially the ones used in battles, are really impressive for the time. This was cutting edge. And, th and these were still used up until the most recent Pokemon games. If not, they were just slightly altered. They used this sprite right here. To this day, so good, they couldn't even dare to make them again. Oh no, would you look at that? We can't proceed with the story. There's a Snorlax on the bridge. Who saw that coming? Well, um, actually, anyone over the age of 25, that's who. 
This thing's been a roadblock for gamers since, um, let's see, the invention of Febreze. Oh, let's just see what else came out that year of. French Toast Crunch? <laughs> what? DVDs? <laughs> like, for real? Wow, would you look at that? Some of these were actually pretty useful for a few years. Until we found out what was in them. Like Airbud. We then get to go to the place in this game where I've spent probably the most time in overall, by a long shot, you know, aside from the friend safari. But that's beyond the point, okay? I made red friends, I caught their Pokemon, cool feature. Worth mentioning, but post-game stuff, okay? We're here, where we are right now, that's where we do the explicit Pokemon breeding. None of which uh, you'll be seeing, of course, you know, do come on. Weird. Funny enough, this video took so long, I ended up hatching one of these suckers just about half the time. In another game, yeah, in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, you can watch that video too. Hmm, it's good. No, don't, don't get me wrong. I like Chespin. I mean, it's a little underrated, but Qualidin or whatever the f honestly underhated. Look at him being all happy as sh with a smug smile. I mean, what did he do when I wasn't looking? I don't trust this thing. One cool feature that does happen somewhat throughout the campaign is the use of riding Pokemon. You even get to put good old mom's ride horn riding genetics to good use. Just reminds me of my dog back home. Poor Rockington. He's such a good rock boy. Hope he's getting lots of pets. Hope he's, hope he's getting polished. Okay, gym designs though, they don't get much better than this. They're cool, they're interactive, they're not gimmicky mini games like Sword and Shield. Like, like Gym 2, for example. It's rock climbing, and he's got a goddamn waterfall in its gym. Gym 3 has vines. Vine climbing and vine swinging. Better than the playing gyms we're used to in the past. Like, like my personal favorite, walk up to Brock and press A. Second gym was not easy. Rock climber gym leader definitely has stand abilities. Just look at that JoJo pose. Oh, her All right, but we make it work. Because this is nothing compared to the pain from the shiny hunts. Our aura is nice. Keep that human-sized walking dog away from me. What is that thing, a Sonic? Oh, this is the next gym leader. Also, the, the gatekeeper of probably the best new feature and possibly feature in all of Pokemon. Aside from, you know, shiny Pokemon, of course. I'm talking Megas. Basically getting new evolutions for some of your favorite Pokemon without having to commit to keeping them that way. Just a, you know, one and done scenario. But don't let that distract you from the part where her gym is a literal skate park. Make sure to manual into grind into 360 to unlock the path to the gym leader. Don't forget to co collect all letters of skate. Not me. I never was good at collecting letters. Mother never got me almost letter adventure for the N64. I never got to learn. Thanks to Spicy Mac Nugget's type advantage and some jank, we make quick work of her again. But that's not all. Got a battle a third time to prove I serve Mega Evolution powers. Except I gotta use a Sonic that likes this smell of my aura. He's a grand, great, great fanfic right there for you guys, you sick fucks. And well, if I'm being honest with you, it's just not shiny, so it's not gonna be around for long. You know, I gotta drop it off at the, the animal shelter to be euthanized right after this, you know. Now a Lapras to surf? That's a goddamn gifted Pokemon right there. I'll eat that up any generation. Wait, wait, wait a second. Is that another Kanto reference? Six whole generations. Lapras is still the go-to surfing Pokemon. Hmm, crazy. Crazy you guys never thought of another one. After a few more battles and honestly, no real interesting events, Banjo evolves finally into his final form. Bowser Bear. I do think it's strange that none of this generation starters never even got a Mega Evolution in this generation. Hmm? Or, or at all, actually. You know, since it is this the same generation they were introduced. You know, you, you think he would do that. I, I don't think he can get more goofy than this. Okay, I, I, stand, I stand corrected. Holy sh**! Speaking of mechanics, you know, horde battles aren't the only shiny hunting method introduced in Gen 6. We also had chain fishing. By catching a Pokemon with suction cups and having them in the front of our party, and fishing consistently, encountering Pokemon and knocking them out or capturing them, until you are at over 40 encounters, your shiny odds go from 1 in 4,096 odds, all the way up to 1 in 100. With those odds, bet you're thinking fishing's pretty cool now, eh? Sure, you're limited to only Pokemon that can be hooked via fishing rod, but come on, with those shiny odds, don't get much better than that. This makes for a pretty time efficient hunt. Where I captured a Remoraid in between two and three hours. Crack a <laughs> Get it? Like a crackhead? Yeah? 
We climbed the coolest Tarzan jungle gym of, uh, sorry, no pun intended, uh, gym. And we have a very solid battle with Scissorman. I'm glad to see he's lived a very full life, despite all the children and innocent people he's killed in his past. But that's his past. He's a good guy now, I'm sure. But don't worry, in the battle he didn't stand a chance. It was a solid wipe. I said, and then calls us up right after, being impressed that we can now mega evolve and wanting us to think, um, long and hard about how we can change the future. Because we can't just sit here and cover up the poopy one, and this is what he says in his words. What is this guy yapping about? Global warming? Oh well, I I'm sure it'll make sense later on, right? Oh my god! He made a doomsday death beam? That ends the world? What was I supposed to think about? There's not gonna be a future to go to. So did I mention that we have a, a gym battle in the Eiffel Tower? <clears throat> Best croissants. I mean, the battle was a little annoying, but the food and the view to die for. Oh, what was that? The death beam and the doomsday stuff? Well, the way I see it is there's nothing to think about. May as well live it up. Okay, so if I say there couldn't be more obvious as the final boss, matching, you know, Team Flair down to the hair follicles, Professor insists that we meet him at his, uh, his own club. As if we're being pimped out. FBI, open up! You're here to secure the child and shoot the bad guy. Don't get that mixed up. That would be very bad. That would be very bad for the news. We'll have to tell the world about the death beam to cover this up. <laughs> That's okay. We have a few battles with our friends here. You know, some spooky stories. Mm -hmm. We get on with the life. Oh, I see this gym. We're actually, uh, you know, full-size dolls inside a giant dollhouse with the uh, teleporters all over. Do you believe this? Oh, she also specializes in, in fairy types. You, you, even know, you even know what the fairy types are? No, they were introduced in these games. So, uh, when do we get to the part where the internet hate is justified? See, I, I know it's not the part where you save the Pokeball Factory from Team Flair. I actually have a good reason to get a Master Ball for once. Oh, okay, never mind. I think I found it. The bad part is when you hunt for a really cool shiny Pumpkaboo that's also introduced in this game. You know, probably the coolest and ghoulest Halloween Pokemon ever. And then you hunt for it, and you get a shiny set of keys. But that's self-inflicted, though. So that doesn't count. I know it wasn't the part where we say Professor Obama Snow or ride on a woolly mammoth. I'm actually not even kidding anymore. Why does the internet hate this game? I genuinely gotta know. No, screw it. I'm going on Twitter. Uh, yes, X. Wait a second. Pokemon X. If I'm being honest, I can't read anyways, so I don't really know what I was going to solve here. I guess we should probably do something about that death ray, hmm? After breaking into his first secret lair underneath his club, which is surprisingly not a little child dungeon, we defeat him there and foil his plans. Except not, because there's a second hideout. Oh, and this one? This one is where the dungeon is. See, I knew it! Well, except the, you know, the prisoner that he had in his dungeon was over, um, get this, 3,000 years old. Aziz is a Pokemon master from literally thousands of years ago who used the legendary Pokemon in his ultimate weapon to help stop Pokemon's biggest war, in which his partner Pokemon literally died in. But by using it, he, uh, you know, sacrificed countless Pokemon just to revive his Florette, who after finding out how it was revived, you know, leaves him. And uh, he's been searching for it ever since. Hmm. Well. How about we just leave this creepy guy in the cave down here? We all good with that, okay? Because we got bigger and better things to do, like battle like Sander. Pokemon X is legendary. Xerneas is like the god of life, or more specifically, the tree of life. And Yavalto from Pokemon Y is the god of destruction, so to speak. So either way, I guess the, the ray gun makes sense. Sure. Okay. Lysander even has a Mega Gyarados in this battle, which is Water Dark type. Honestly, it works better for me. Banjo can now just power punch it out of the way. No threat. And for a guy who's planned on you know, refreshing the entire world with the Death Laser, he does sure act like a little baby when we defeat him. He ends up shooting off the laser anyways. I assume severely underpowered now because we freed the legendary, because all it does is create a giant crater in the ground. Whoa, the world is saved. We weren't vaporized. I'm so excited. Oh. Wait, I can't head into the final gym yet. I don't even have a full shiny team. Well, I do have to retrieve the gym leader from some sort of strange pokey paradise place. Might as well hunt here, right? I was thinking Trevenant in the forest right before this, but there's a lot more cool options here. And forest had like a 40% chance I would just get a mush. You're kidding me, right? I saved the world. Is that how you're going to repay me? I take it all back, Pokemon X is bad! Start the new Twitter threads! It's Jover for this game, I tell you! Pokemon X marks the spot!
The spot shit. I'm gonna beat this ice gym with the Tetris block ass puzzle. And I swear, I I'm gonna light up X like Lysander never could. Hold that thought. Is that hoodie meant to look like the hood? Is it TM Pokeball? Okay, well, maybe I j judged this game too quick. You think I'm gonna miss my chance to buy that? All right, guys, uh, I made it. It's almost over. I'm at the Elite Four with my team of some of the most useless dog shit. But let's get inside that massive dog Dimodome and show France who's the boss of this place. Well, that's awkward. All right, call me a simple man, but these Elite Four rooms, especially for the times, got me really excited. I mean, also, picking the order you want to challenge them is pretty cool. Not sure if it really matters. We have to battle them all anyways, but it's a nice touch of you know, freedom. Not to mention the final battle with Champion of France, which I'm pretty sure he's just straight up Audrey Hepburn. I mean, they're both movie stars, both fashion icons, and come on, the hair. Yeah, this battle ain't easy. Boy, it was so I thought until I realized she has a glaring ice weakness to her team. I was a little worried about this until I realized that. Even without that, if you have a well-rounded team with good movesets and uh, you're not severely under level like I was, you'll definitely come out of this battle a winner. But honestly, that's the thing with the Kalos region. It more than prepares you for this fight. Almost with uh, gift Pokemon alone. I mean, we're talking two starters with multiple typings. A Lucario, a Lapras, and even the legendary Pokemon alone. You could probably beat this game. Just make sure to not use a team like mine. Or just have Ice Beam, you know, those defeat like her entire team except for two Pokemon. That's not even the end. There's more where that came from in the Kalos region. Being the champion is actually a big deal. Unlike Paldea, where like there's four champions. You hear that crowd? Oh, is is this first saving the world? Alright, uh, I may have got that a little confused here. Cute little Eiffel Tower badge, that's nice. Wait, that all? Well, of course not. The 3,000 year old man is here too. I mean, sure, he is like 800 feet tall and 3,000 years old. You, you came here to battle me? You've had 29 lifetimes to prepare for this dude. I'm 10 years old. We're just gonna let this happen? In the streets? Of course we defeat him, come on. I wouldn't be surprised if you um, also didn't have to beat this, but. He only has three Pokemon. What would they do? How would they uh, justify making another parade just to have this cutscene again? Well, that's probably why they only gave him three Pokemon, right? Cutscene would have to finish regardless if he lost, right? And due to the power of friendship and uh, losing to us, I guess, his Pokemon he's been searching for for like 3,000 years. Some odd bullshit just comes, you know, floating out of the sky. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I've actually been misspeaking. It's over 3,000 years. I don't know how he kept count. Absolutely kills me. The president just walks up to you and is like, hey, I want to be honest. I don't know anything about this 3,000 year old caveman guy. But I'm going to make up some of the most devious lore. Have you ever heard? Yeah, I'm about to make up some shit, dude. Like, okay, listen, he was, he wasn't a good guy, right? He, he treated his Pokemon bad. You know, he sacrificed a lot of Pokemon for that. I don't know how I know this. He only told you guys. But somehow, once you battled him, he was good after that. Yeah, he was good after that. Yeah. Makes sense. I don't even know this guy, so I just made that shit up. All jokes aside, this is a really good ending for a very well-made game. And honestly, I can't I can't even see where the hate is coming for this game at all. You know, not that I could've, you know, find it anywhere anyways. So, that's a wrap on Pokemon X with only shiny Pokemon. Hope you enjoyed. I've been R9, and I hope you had yourselves a damn good time.